students, we will continue with our study of point blocks and high rises. This is part 2 of the presentation. And if you remember my lecture which I have taken in the first, the first part of it, when I talked to you about the coming in or the rise of high rise construction and skyscrapers in India, particularly after the post liberalization, in the post liberalization era. There were high rises in the pre liberalization era. I talked to you about it yesterday that even buildings as tall as 7 to 10 stories were considered as high rises and uh, uh, we had looked at the reason why there is such an exponential or rather a very major rise in high rise buildings across the country. And the reasons I told you are very similar to what happened in Chicago school that because of the uh, increase in the urban population and because of rising economy, particularly let us take the case of Mumbai which is the financial center of India, the financial capital of India. Uh, the demand of land was more and more, land became scarce and more and more costly and the only solution was to go vertical. A very similar thing had persisted during the time of the Chicago school movement around the 1880s uh, in, in America. In, in Chicago and uh, so they also had to go vertical. It was a practical solution in solving the problem of this rising population and uh, constantly growing economy. And so also in India, post liberalization there has been a shooting up of these high rises all across the country. It has not been concentrated only in the megapolises, so to speak of uh, Delhi and Mumbai etc. But also in Bangalore, Pune, Lucknow, Ahmedabad, all over the country, Gandhi Nagar, I will show you one example today, where they are taking deep root and of course this, this, this whole rush is being led by Mumbai which has the highest, one of the highest number of high rise buildings in the world and uh, probably the highest number of high rises under construction. And uh, so many of them uh, are now skyscrapers and predominantly these skyscrapers are have uh, the high rise building construction in India. Earlier used to be focused on institutional buildings or even corporate buildings, but uh, more and more the focus has shifted to residential buildings and mixed use buildings. Now this slide actually shows you what I talked to you last uh, in the last session when I told you about the rise of point blocks in India with the advent of the modernist movement or the idea that modernist movement brought in India and this led to the development of slab blocks and point blocks very similar to what was already happening in the west. But whereas they were working in glass and steel, we were working in RCC and glass and um, uh, we have also had uh, uh, provision of louvers. We took the example of Indian Express building and compared it with the liver house where it was just plain glass in the liver house. In uh, Indian Express building, Stein provided these balconies which worked as sun shades to cut off the direct sun and rain falling on the glass facade. Whereas the glass facade provided these ample views towards the Arabian Sea and the harbour in the city on the other side. So again climate has played a major role in redefining the tall building or skyscraper construction in India. We have not had those slick text skyscrapers that I talked to you about yesterday and I had compared to you the example of John Burgey of Philip Johnson, uh, uh, John Burgey Associates who had designed the Air India building and in the 1980s I showed you some example of that slick tech, sleek glass architecture of the same firm in America which was so different from the Air India building because in that building though a slab block, Air India building had those small fenestrations so that we could accommodate for the hot and humid climate of Mumbai. We would also taken this uh, classic uh, set of buildings in along the marine drive and in this picture also you can see all four of them, the Air India building, the Indian Express building behind it, the Hotel Trident building and th that which is not visible which is towards the right side is the NCPA apartment block. And we had also talked about it yesterday that uh, 
for example, these three and it in this picture it is even clearer that these three buildings have this three storied podium over which the slab block is rising and all three have this uh, terrace garden as you can see here in the Air India building, in the Indian Express building and this is the Trident Hotel and the picture I showed you yesterday was the shot that had been taken from the pool side from somewhere here looking towards the podiums of Air India and the Indian Express building. Then we would also seen a series of buildings like the Stock Exchange building, the Vidhan Sabha building in Mumbai, etc., which also had a similar concept of a, a multi-leveled podium block over which the slab block is rising. And I told you that this idea had also originated in America and uh, I believe the first building having that idea in the modern times was the liver house which had that podium over which the slab block rose. Only thing was in their case the podium also had a courtyard in between and that was uh, one of the differences. But that idea then uh, came up in many buildings in Mumbai. Now coming to today's presentation, we are now seeing in the 21st century as I had uh, also shown you some of the examples yesterday of the rise of the tower blocks, skyscrapers, any building greater than equal to 150 meters as I mentioned yesterday is considered a skyscraper. When the definition actually came up during the Chicago school, it simply meant a building that is scraping the sky, so the term skyscrapers and in those days even a 8 or 10 story building was considered as scraping the sky or a skyscraper, but that definition is far gone. Now it is greater than equal to 150 meters and in, in, in many cases we are looking at super tall buildings which are greater than 300 meters. Now these are the examples. Let us come to the focus of the skyscrapers or the tall buildings in India which is residential construction or apartments. This is the um, Imperial Towers so work by Hafiz contractor around 2010. I had shown you this example yesterday. Now going a little deeper, we are looking at the plan uh, of uh, these apartments and they are very lavish. Much of the residential development that is taking place in these skyscrapers or these really tall buildings is luxurious and uh, uh, serving to the higher or the highest income bracket in our country predominantly because of the economics of construction. These buildings are very expensive to build and they are provided with lavish facilities. Yesterday I told you that when these buildings come up, there is the, uh, uh, we would seen the advantages, there is the advantage of sustainability because we are having a very small physical footprint and therefore we can save on uh, agricultural land cover or even provide large green cover. Moreover, our, all our, eminent, uh, all our uh, facilities are economized within a tall building like that. Uh, the added advantage is that the amenities or the community spaces or recreational spaces can all be housed close to each other and have, uh, can be given access to a large number of people because they are all housed vertically. Of course, as I mentioned yesterday, there are many other problems associated with tall buildings. Let me give you one example. If such a large number of people are staying in one tall building, that is, this is running into probably a couple of um, thousand people also or more, the amount of parking spaces required to be provided, the kind of facilities to be provided, the systems to be provided reach a humongously large, uh, they take a humongously large form and there is, uh, this requires a huge amount of engineering technology that goes into it. I also told you yesterday that India now has the capability not only to make skyscrapers but even super tall skyscrapers and we are reaching to a point where we will have in-house capability totally to make them. And also mentioned that many of the experts required to work on these skyscrapers, NEP consultants and HVAC consultants who are internationally uh, known and they are working globally have set up shop in India and that is to our advantage. Of course, I would also mentioned that the contractors have to up their game because 
these buildings require a very high level of finish quality, very high level of precision work and therefore, that is an area where we really have to uh, build uh, up our game uh, in the construction work and it is already happening. Um, there have been teething problems, I will consider an example in front of you which is an actual building that has been built and there have been problems, but teething troubles are bound to happen when something happening uh, for the past nearly 100 years across the world has only really picked up momentum in the last 20 to 25 years. So, here we have Hafiz's, con Hafiz's contractors imperial towers, and you can see it is a lavish building and generally uh, the, the apartments uh, designed cannot be like a bungalow design or a, a, a detached house design where you can have even ample open and semi open spaces, you can have a, a, a large amount of flexibility. The plan though functional and though meeting the needs of a very high income bracket family have to be somewhat compact and you can see here as you enter in there is a small bar space here and then you have the and this will continue that the uh, as you walk in the, the there is a free flowing space accommodating the living room and the dining area and that, that is connected to an open kitchen. Now, this kind of format is already there in our houses and the same format is being repeated in flats and apartments across the country, even across the globe because this gives a feeling of openness in a, in a somewhat compact space, this one large space subdivided into separate uh, spaces uh, creates that feeling of openness and uh, uh, feeling of a large space. And so, this is pretty common and then there are these bedrooms towards the right and the left. Uh, the master bedrooms uh, for example, in this case uh, we have uh, large units provided. Now, this is this is uh, this can the, the apartments can range from anything from 2 BHK to 5 BHK. This particular apartment is a 5 BHK apartment and uh, for example, if you walk in this is a 4 BHK apartment that you see here and uh, uh, so you walk in and you have your again uh, the, the, uh, the kitchen space and the living dining area is uh, housed as one uh, free flowing space along with uh, an attached balcony. Now, this is uh, an Indian addition. These balconies normally are not there in the western world and uh, but we are providing balconies. Now, wind would be an issue at high levels, but I believe that has been taken care of. And then you have uh, bedroom number 1, bedroom number 2, bedroom number 3 and bedroom number 4. And uh, as you can see that providing these uh, apartments, there are multiple problems which simply we do not have the time to cover. Services is a big problem. Provision of uh, uh, washroom facilities and the ventilation provisions for them, something that you study at a, at a very rudimentary level, for example, at your undergraduate program becomes a very, very complicated process as we go in for skyscrapers. So, this is uh, the further uh, part or uh, implants of the Imperial Towers and you can see this is a duplex apartment. This is the 5 BHK duplex and there are the other plans. Then there is another part of the imperial towers, this is the existing imperial towers by his contractor, a much taller imperial 3 designed by Adrian Smith and Gordon Gill commonly known as AS plus GG. Their firm is coming up with these uh, imperial 3, this next to the imperial towers and the SD corporation which is behind this is wanting to go in for this uh, third building. This is an ongoing construction and uh, uh, their whole experience, expertise and reputation is behind this project and this is uh, of two uh, real estate developers coming together, Shakurji Palunji and uh, Dilip Thakur group. Then there is the Rehija group which is also uh, uh, doing, uh, playing a very key role as one of the key players in developing these 
uh, high rise apartment blocks. So, we have the Raheja Viveria in Mumbai, which is the lead registered residential project. It is already completed. It is one of Mumbai's green structures. And as you can see the plan, it is a fairly elaborately lavish plan as you enter in. There is again this common space that you see here, the kitchen along with the living and the dining area. And then you have another uh, common space, a study on the side and there are balconies on different sides. There is a lindy balcony up front. This is the view of this balcony looking towards the sea. And then you have adjoining bedrooms, bedroom number 1, bedroom number 2, bedroom number 3, bedroom number 4 and uh, even the kitchen has got a central island. So, this is a fairly, uh, fairly lavish apartments even among lavish apartments vis-a-vis -vis the amount of space provided. Then we have the Lodha group which is also another key player, the Lodha Primero in Mahalakshmi in Mumbai and this apartments in a tower block, like I said, uh, nearly in all of them we find uh, there are balconies. Another idea that is found in many of these apartment blocks is they have a podium as you can see in the uh, Lodha Primero and on top of the podium is a sky garden or a roof garden with swimming pools and recreation facilities as this picture shows. So, when we move forward, we see here this is the site plan and uh, this is how the apartments are laid out. So, there are four apartments to this floor, there are these two BHK apartments on this side and there are three BHK apartments on the other side and then there are, so this is a, a series of floors and then the 49th and 51st floor, the design was supposed to have, a, one of the apartments was removed and that was replaced by this sky garden. So, that was what it was supposed to be, but uh, uh, please look up this data to be more clear about it that was this finally executed. Uh, uh, so, here we have the balconies as you can see and the balconies are also staggered as you can see that there are the long balconies and there are, uh, there is a staggering done all across the facade of the building and there is the Loda Fiorenza. Now, the initial studies, the pictures, examples that I am showing you are of more regularly organized floor plans, right. So, this one is also um, already uh, up and running and this is the view, the very large, uh, uh, the free flowing space within the apartment and uh, this is the podium level uh, uh, recreational space or uh, the, the uh, podium level garden and you can see the view of the podium level uh, space also from the top and uh, there we have it. Uh, this is, uh, now what I have done is I have uh, organized the plan with the north point point in the same direction. So, the site plan and the view, uh, this pool indicative uh, here, the pool the way it is shown is how it has been shown here. And then uh, this plan, uh, the floor plans are rising above it and these are uh, the way the apartments have been laid out. Then there is the Loda Bellissimo A, B and C which is 221 meters high in Mumbai and 53 floors residential apartment block, exclusive project with world class facilities including conference rooms and concierge services and excellent landscaping. Now, please understand that even in this very high bracket living style, there are, there are a series of brackets within them. So, it can range from a few crores to tens of crores. It can, it can grow from a lower end of the high level market to the upper end even of the high, 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 high level, high bracket market. And uh, these are the floor plans of uh, this project. Then there is the Ahuja group, this is the Ahuja Towers in Mumbai. Again you see that in the design that they have uh, uh, come up with, this is the build, final building. This again has this podium uh, arrangement, this series of floors adjoining the tower block and this is the, uh, the roof garden uh, that is provided with the pool. And these are the plans. Now, these are very standard plans. Of course, I told you yesterday also one of the things that was happening in the high rises earlier was the essential focus was on the structural system. 
but now we have far more creative and architectural freedom and one of the ways in which we are able to do that is because we have amazing structural uh, abilities today and that leads to us playing with the form of the building and thus are able to create uh, spaces of a different type, not standard um, uh, squarish or rectangular uh, flow plans of apartments, but they are different. For example, here we are able to get this kind of a curve and then there are these two apartments on either side of the elevator section. And in fact, if it, uh, because I was talking about the higher end of the higher market, as you can see there are these elevators which are part of the apartment. These are uh, private elevators uh, leading into the, uh, the, the apartment itself. Then the Sky City which is coming at, up at Borivili in Mumbai to 10, 10 meters 67 floors high and now I am coming to the kind of apartments in which wings come out from the central space. So there are these three apartments which are uh, opening which are moving outwards from the central space and this is the, the layout as you walk in the kitchen, uh, kitchen is right at the opening and then again this forms the free flowing area and then you have bedroom number 1, 2 and 3. So this is how this has been done, Oberoi skies in Mumbai, G I G gift diamond tower in Gandhinagar and this I believe is a corporate building, it is a 410 meter building that is supposed proposed 86 floors high. Then there is the Lokhandwala Minerva in Mumbai which is under construction, it is supposed to be 3, and 3 meters high, 82 floors developed by the Lokhandwala infrastructure group. Again it has got these lavish 3 to 5 BHK apartments, even 4.5 BHK luxury and 6 BHK duplexes. And this is the construction that is going on, right? I, I, this is I believe uh, uh, close to Lodha Bellissimo, this is Lodha Bellissimo at the back and this is the way the final building is supposed to be. Again if you can see this has got this podium level uh, design over which the, uh, the terrace garden is supposed to be and here again as you walk in there are these three apartments on this side and one large apartment on this side and it has got this balcony completely all uh, around the apartment and these are full length balconies provided to each of the apartments. Then there is the Mantri Pinnacle, remember that I had shown you this in the previous presentation uh, when I was trying to indicate to you that high rise or tower block construction is not just confined to Mumbai, even I had given the example of uh, uh, the 42 building in Kolkata and I had talked about the Mantri Pinnacle in Bangalore which is a residential building, if you are 153 meters high, I told you so it is just touching the bar of our skyscraper with 46 floors and it is the tallest building in South India with 3, 4 to 5 bedroom apartments and penthouses and having luxurious amenities as in all the projects we have seen mentioned today. So this is the overall landscape plan and as you can see again I, I mentioned that this series of projects that I am showing you have this winged kind of arrangement. So there are these two apartments here and then two on this side. So they are opening outwards from the central area. This is the service area with the elevators and the staircase. Again you can, you can keep on seeing the same repetitive model of the kitchen, the living and the dining space being one common space or free flowing space. Uh, if, you, if you move in here, here you have it, this, uh, this space and so that is a repetitive model that we keep seeing. Now this is uh, one thing that you will find that the structure, conceptual structure of the floor plan of residences in the 20th century walking into the 21st century has hardly seen any major upgrade from what came in with the advent of modern architecture and particularly the idea of free flowing spaces of Frank Lloyd right. So when he con 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 came up with the concept of these free flowing spaces of living room and dining spaces one common uh, one free flowing space and then, uh, then it graduated to the younger generation of European architects like Corbusier and Mies etc. This idea has continued 
upgrades have happened. It is like saying that a particular technology uh, essentially conceptually is still the same, only upgrades are happening, incremental upgrades are happening. So, if I look at these apartments, I do not find anything radically new. All the projects I have shown you, this is the play of overall arrangement. Conceptually, it is pretty much the same. Oasis Tower 1 com has already, it is coming up in Mumbai, most of it has been completed. And this is again like I showed you that this is a common space and then there are wings radiating outwards. This is the uh, arrangement and uh, uh, it has got this curved plate on the outside, this curved uh, wall that you see here. Uh, if you look at it very carefully in the finished uh, uh, view of the building. And then we come up to skyscrapers that are circular or elliptical or uh, rounded. And here is the super tech supernova which is coming up in Noida. This as you can see here is a long, this apartment as you enter in has got these up, uh, bedrooms in, in this manner. So, you have uh, the living room and the kitchen and dining space here. You you walk in, uh, uh, I am sorry, in the kitchen is probably, yeah, this is a, a, a bigger kitchen which is connected to this area and then you have one, two bedrooms, there is another lounge space here and then there is a third bedroom. So, this is the overall uh, elliptical uh, shape of the building and this apartment that we are seeing is this particular edge uh, apartment on this side and it has got this long balcony which is in front of all the rooms and the amazing thing is that all the rooms have got the view towards the outside. So, this is a very novel idea that all the views are provided from all the rooms looking as a vast expanse like this which is a very good idea and technology is enabling us to do that providing us this uh, expansive view like this because of uh, the uh, structural abilities that we have today. Supertech North High is also coming up in Noida and in this Supertech North High there is the upcoming concept uh, of studio apartments. Studio apartments are those that are having living space or a lounge with a kitchenette and one bedroom and attached bathroom. It is predominantly focused on bachelors or even for uh, people who travel internationally or people who travel frequently and they are in a particular city very, very often maybe for larger periods of time and uh, they want some kind of personalized service away from a hotel. So, they end up purchasing these studio apartments which are more like uh, lavish suites and they are, they have concierge services within the building that uh, take care of all the needs of the client and uh, uh, whether it is uh, laundry, whether it is food, it's, it's, it works, it provides your facilities exactly like a top class 5 star hotel, but this is your own personal space and there is also the idea of um, uh, shared uh, uh, a rental arrangement where when the person is not using the studio apartment, he can rent it out and thus he can uh, uh, get some kind of a return on his investment. But so, here we have the studio apartment as you walk down this corridor, you have one studio apartment 2 and 3. If you look at this one, it is very simple. It has got the, uh, uh, the bedroom attached to the living area and there is a kitchenette. So, it is a very simple format. Uh, so, also here and so also here. But if you walk in, this one is a more elaborate one because as you walk in there is a servants room, there is an open kitchen with a dining area and a living space and then there is one big lavish bedroom that has been provided with a sitting space and an attached bathroom. But this is a standard apartment in the building, it is a three bedroom apartment or rather a four bedroom apartment that has been provided and as you can see now here you can say that yes some changes are being made because these are skyscrapers and the apartments are being modified to for because of the shape. Uh, shape is playing a very important role aesthetically and therefore, as you walk in, this is an elongated, the free 
plan uh, is uh, elongated and uh, you have uh, 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 these uh, uh, the, the dining area and the kitchen and then uh, along this these bedrooms four bedrooms have been provided. So, conceptually the idea remains the same only arrangement wise changes are taking place because of the built form. Now, let us come to probably the best known example of a skyscraper residential building in India, the World One Tower by the Lodha Group in Mumbai. Now, this building was supposed to go up to 447 meters with uh, 442 meters with 117 floors. So, if you look at this image, you can see that this is supposed to be really tall and at one time this would have, this was supposed to be the tallest residential building in the world. But actually the tallest residential building today exists in New York, in Manhattan and now this building's height was also cut down. As you can see from the actual building, if you compare it to the picture, you can see that much of this part has been taken out. If you compare it to this block, you can see that the overall height has been decreased and this is designed by Ty Corp, Fried and Partners along with Leslie E. Robertson Associates. So, the, this, this company, so th that is also indicative of like I mentioned to you Adrian Smith and Gordon Mills. So, there are many foreign architectural firms who have got tremendous experience in making these structurally complex skyscrapers coming into India and making these buildings. Now, this has got a series of floor plans that are uh, very interesting because the, 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 the building for example, uh, in this part it stops, one part stops here. So, this has a roof garden um, uh, with swing pools and recreation facilities and the other continues upwards. So, uh, the building continues like this and then this part gets cut off and the building continues to rise with these apartments and then the number of types of apartments within this whole uh, uh, set of buildings, uh, the world one tower, they are varied. Uh, one way of trying to understand these apartment plans is that just keep your eye focused on the service area. So, if you keep your eye focused on the service area, the elevated area for example, you can then be able to decipher these complex plans. Now, this plan, the one that you see here, it is a fairly big plan. This is pretty, pretty, this is one single apartment, really lavish. It has got this entire living space here. It has got a very elaborate kitchen attached to the servants room and it is duplex. It has got a floor above it also and it has got uh, an exercise area, a gym and very, very lavish arrangement, it has got its own private elevator also within it and then there are the other apartment shapes so to speak of uh, uh, plans that come up because of the curvilinear form of the world one tower. These are the other plans. Now, it, uh, the way to look at it is this is the overall form. So, this plan responds to this one, this to this one and so on and so forth. These are the views and you can see these amazing balconies and they are repeated in all the apartments we have seen today. The extensive use of glass because one of the things that, that is so important and for which people pay a premium price is the view that at that height with the clean air people want that amazing view as much as possible. So, that is what architects try to capture or builders try to capture. So, here it is you can see the views that, that the animated views and you can see the amazing view this project is providing to the occupant. Now, if you want to see how the actual apartment looks, please go to YouTube. There are uh, uh, quite a few videos there of the world one tower actual apartments and you can have a look uh, uh, at the finished product. Then uh, this slide actually shows that NCR a region Delhi and its satellite areas is also trying to come up with the skyscrapers uh, uh, as uh, also Mumbai and many are proposed by the Supertech group. Um, there is a Supertech Supernova, the Vijay Revanta, etcetera, etcetera. Now, 
these slides that I am showing you, couple of them are trying to show you the various skyscraper forms that are being thought of uh, amongst uh, in, in upcoming skyscrapers in a proposed whether they will be finally built or not, uh, we cannot be sure about that, but these forms are proposed, these skyscrapers are proposed and you can see they are amazingly radical and interesting forms, very like what is happening globally. So, in, in this way, India is pretty much caught up, caught up, it is it's, it's catching up or it is nearly caught up with global trends and we are seeing um, uh, the Indian global citizen who travels frequently abroad and has a global lifestyle is being afforded the same kind of uh, luxurious lifestyle and facilities as you would find in any other premium city of the world. And these are some of the other forms that are being proposed, this one and then like for example, the Indra Tower which I have just explained a little bit more because this is even unique amongst the uh, proposed forms of the future. It is supposed to be 300 meters high, 80 floors by the Vadva group and the designer, the design team behind it is James Law Cyber Texture. You can look it up online regarding this form and the concept is that of a single drop of water which is freely dropping into the water and the, the shape it takes up because of gravity and, dynam and dy dynamic properties and that is what is supposed to be. There are different depths of balconies that are provided along the facade of the Indra Tower and the emphasis is on the views. So, because of this shape, it is providing a vast view of the sea from each unit and the structural design happens to be a combination of various structural systems. So, this is uh, what it is supposed to be. Then there is the Lanco Tower, uh, the Lanco Signature Towers in Hyderabad. Now, this is like 20, 20 67 feet, uh, I am sorry I should have converted it into meters divided by 3, it is a very tall uh, building close to uh, I believe, uh, uh, sorry uh, yeah, so close to 70, uh, 700 meters, 600 plus meters high. The Namaste Tower in Mumbai is close to uh, uh, 350 meters high, 1037 feet, I am dividing it simply by round number of 3 and so 114 floors in Hyderabad and 62 floors in the amazingly iconic Namaste Tower in Mumbai. Okay, this slide actually shows an idea that was proposed and explored but never finally executed. The idea is very simple, you have a skyscraper block and this was supposed to actually be for the slum dwellers of Dharavi and what it was supposed to do was that each of the dwellers will be provided an apartment, a small scale apartment in this tower and the apartments would be made out of shipping crates, uh, the shipping units that are there, the, 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 the cargo units that are there, those cuboidal units, they will make up these apartments as you can see here, very colorful and they would be plugged into the skyscraper very similar to the idea of United Habitation where Kabuzier plugged in the apartments into the block. So, this was supposed to, this was supposed to be the frame in which these shipping containers, shipping containers would be plugged in and thus we would have this, uh, this check section shows these. Uh, the shipping containers are plugged in and each of the shipping containers uh, or uh, the, the unit or multiple of these units would serve as the low income group apartments, but it was never finally executed. So, thus we come to the idea of affordable housing in India. One of the ways in which high rises is impacting uh, in uh, the Indian building sector is with regard to affordable housing because we know that we need approximately 2 million units per year to meet the growing demand for housing in urban areas and the Prime Minister Avas Yojana PMAY is in high gear to try to meet this need. Corporations like the NBCC, the CPWD etcetera are working to 
in, in, in this area to provide this uh, middle income, low income and EWS housing for the middle class and the lower middle class. And uh, of course, these are not high rises the ones that we have seen, these are probably 8 to 10 storied high, but they are very needed today. This is the, 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 the meat of the matter in India with regard to affordable housing. Now, affordable housing in India is also running into a lot of issues because this is not quite affordable as we would count it to be. A uh, 30 lakh house is an MIG, a uh, 50 lakh uh, house is an MIG and EWS will be uh, 5 lakh rupees. So that is not quite, we are not quite at home or comfortable with the idea of these dwellings being so expensive for the common man, very difficult to be able to provide that kind of money or what mechanism should we have is a totally separate topic. We are totally out of our number of lectures and modules this time. It is a very important topic that must be studied. I do hope that some of you will take the initiative to study the issue of affordable housing. This has continued to be a burning problem for India right from the time of India's independence. A lot of effort has been made, a lot of solutions have tried to be, uh, we have tried to find architects like Bivi Doshi, we have studied examples with you of Aranya housing and I studied the Bolapur housing and other such attempts made by them uh, at various levels to find a solution, but we are still nowhere in sight of a solution that will be workable for millions of units across the country. I will end here with this series on point blocks and high rises. I am quite aware of the fact that this presentations, the two that I have shown you are just a summarized version of a very vast number of buildings being built in this sector and there is a lot of interest uh, that is being generated in this area. I do hope that you will take time out and go to your net, go to literature and read more about this topic. Thank you.